are we doing today, Anchor Church? Wow. Man, we love you all so much. And um, wow, what a great day. 11.45. I matched my wife today in our outfits. I feel it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a... She came out, she's like, you look so good, I'm going to go put it on. <laughs> man, we are so glad you're with us today. Uh, man, I love you so much, church. I love you so much. And uh, nothing, nothing I'd rather do, nothing I'd rather do. I was talking to a pastor the day, and he said something about, you know, da, 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 when we retire, I said, <laughs> retire, bro? 50 years old, I just refueled, dog. I'm like... Retire. I just gonna keep refueling. Let's go. Love what we get to do. And uh, man, I'm, I want to jump into the sermon here in a second. But uh, I just want to say a couple things. Our church is just—it's—it's it's incredible. Just a little over a couple years old, and what God is doing—it's—it's it's unreal. It's unreal. And uh, we know it's—it's it's not us. It's all God. And Teresa and I, every day, we're praying. We're sitting in our devotion, just going, God. Just like the prayer of Moses in the Old Testament, if you don't go first, we don't want to take a step. And people say, when are you guys going to get a building? When are you guys going to get a building? I'm like, when God gives it to us. Because uh, if I go find one, then we found it. But if God brings it, then God brought it. And uh, so I, I'm, just, I'm just so overwhelmed by what God's doing. And tomorrow night for all the men in the house, we're kicking off our men's movement tomorrow night. <laughs> Oh, brotherhood <laughs> happening starting tomorrow night. It's our, our kickoff to our men's movement here at Anchor. We don't have ministries, we have movements. Because ministries come and go, but movements go on forever. And uh, pregame starts at 6.30 tomorrow night. Doors open at 6.45, Caleb. It's going to be an incredible night. Food, games, fun men, testosterone. It's going to be a fire night. Just That's all it is. Just a bunch of yelling and burping. It's going to be an awesome men's night. So free of charge. But it's going to be a great night. And then today's Baptism Sunday. And so if you have given your heart to Jesus but not been baptized, that's your next step. Maybe you're going, well, I wasn't prepared today, Pastor. I, I didn't bring any shorts. Oh, we got them. I didn't bring a towel. Oh, we got you. I didn't bring a shirt. We got you. I didn't bring a hair dryer. Nah, I didn't go home. Well, <laughs> but man, I can't think of a better way to publicly declare your faith in Jesus than water baptism today. But we are week two in this series that I titled Powered Up. And, and what we were doing over the last few series here is really kind of getting back to the basics of our faith, getting back to the basics of our faith. And we talked about worship for a couple weeks, and, and we, we're talking about the Holy Spirit right now, because if I'm honest, sometimes we just forget, don't we? We just forget. But we got to get back to the basics. And what I want to do today, if you'll allow me, is I'm, I'm going to preach, because I always preach, and I'll probably yell, because I always like to yell. People go, Sean, why do you do that? Well, I played, I played sports all through school, I played college basketball, and the best way I learn is just like that yelling. So it's typically when I, you know, and, and a lot of it is just like I'm passionate and a lot of it is I'm trying to keep you awake. So it's just kind of a twofold thing. But I want to I wanna teach a little bit today, if, if you'll allow me as well. I, mean, I love, love coming to church and learning something. You know, I, one of the things that we, we, we have on a, a monthly routine at our house is we had this for years, and I didn't have it any other place we lived. I didn't have it in California. We didn't have it in Indiana. But, but for some reason in, in Florida, it seems like we go through seasons where our, our AC, our air-conditioned drain valve outside, it gets, our overflow valve gets clogged. And your AC just, is this Florida problems? And, and, and it just, your AC kicks off, and, and I would call, and the people would come out. And they, it was it seemed like on a monthly basis. I'm like, I don't know what's, what's, what's happening here at all of our houses. It can't just be that we have that bad of luck. What is it? So a buddy of mine who had an air conditioning company, he said, Pastor, I want you to watch how I do this so that you can just do it from now on. I'm like, I'm, I'm all about learning. So he comes out, hooks up a, a shop vac to my outside AC overflow drain, 
just suctions everything out and the AC just clicks back on. So every, the beginning of every month, that's my routine. I go out, take the shot back. It takes like, you know, five minutes. I go out, pull all that garbage out of the drain and it, and it works perfect just to make sure we're not, you know, having issues. So, so this is like my, my typical routine. I go out, I go in the garage, I get my shop vac, I plug it in right behind the AC unit. There's a place right there. I bring out the shop vac, plug in the shop vac, turn it on. Woo, I go really, really loud and just pull all that garbage out. So a couple months ago, just like routine, I go out there. I plug it in back behind the AC unit. There's a, a, a plug back there. I plugged everything in, got everything prepared, had my hand over here to keep all the suction out, and, and uh, nothing happened. So you got to be kidding me right now. Like this, 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 has, this has to happen. This is like our, our monthly routine, Did the shop back diary. I mean, it's like, it's not that old. It's not like we use it all the time. We bought it specifically for this job. It's a good name brand. Like what, what's the deal? So I kept, I kept, I took it apart, looking, I'm just like, you ever have those moments where something happens and you don't get mad, but the more it doesn't work, the more ticked, you, you know what I'm talking about? We're Christians, it's okay. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you're not at the edge of, like, cussing, but you're, like, on, like, on the edge. You know, you know? It's like you're not there yet, but you're kind of, like, teetering going. There's things about ready. And so, it's like, pastor, I'm just, confession's good for the soul, I'm just saying. And so I, I, I'm thinking, well, I, I don't, and so I, I, I pull the shop back closer, and I recognize I'm getting a lot more leeway here with the shop back than I normally get, and I go and I check, and it had come unplugged from back behind the AC unit, and I thought, like, it's, it was that easy, and it, it didn't matter the name of the shop back, didn't matter how big it was, didn't matter how powerful it was, if it wasn't plugged in, I wasn't going to get anything from it. This is why this is such a big deal. Because many of us, we feel like I'm very educated. I don't need the Holy Spirit. I'm very mature in my faith. I don't need the Holy Spirit. I've been in church a long time. I was actually born in the church, Pastor Sean. Actually in the church, literally. In the, I was born in the church. And, and rip, but something is missing in my life. And if we're not careful, what happened was we came unplugged from the power of the Holy Spirit. Sad thing that a lot of churches in our world are meeting today without functioning in the power of the Holy Spirit, wondering why they're not growing. Because a lot of us function out of what we do instead of out of what he does. And if you're here today exhausted going, something's going on, maybe you should check yourself because you might have come unplugged. And the only way to have that Holy Spirit functioning like he functions is for you to be powered up and plug it in. And that's what this whole series is, is all about. Now, I talked last week. If you missed it, go to our YouTube channel. And I'm, I'm already yelling. I'm going, it's teaching, teaching. I'm so excited already. It's just a shop vac. <laughs> Can't help myself. If you guys are new here, like, what is wrong with them? I just, I love preaching. All right, so, good. Here we go. Back to it. If you missed any of last week, I talked about the the purpose of the Holy Spirit. You can go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, watch it. This week, I want to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. Next week, we're going to end the series talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, um, Jesus, in the New Testament, I told you last week, he has this meal with his disciples, the, the Last Supper. There's a lot of stuff happening in the Last Supper. He's washing his disciples' feet. He's talking about who's going to, not who, but someone will betray him, and Judas runs out, and everyone's like, I wonder who it is. And, and, and Jesus talks about how he, he's going to die. He goes through, they have communion. All these things are happening, but Jesus also let some know about the Holy Spirit. Now, then Jesus is betrayed. Jesus dies. Three days later, he's resurrected. And he spends some time with his disciples and with his followers. And in this time with these disciples and with his followers, he tells them, I, I told you about the Holy Spirit. And he says this, and I want you to remain 
Stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit falls. Stay, don't go anywhere. Stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit falls. And then he ascends into heaven, and the followers and the disciples, 120 of them are like, we better hang out. What's, what's it going to be like when the Holy Spirit falls? Oh, you'll know. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, this is after he's resurrected, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? See, what the disciples thought is they were Jews under Roman oppression. And what they thought their Messiah, Jesus, came to do was deliver them from earthly Roman oppression. And so Jesus dies, he's resurrected, and the disciples go back to the question, is it our time now? Can we just go give Rome what they deserve? Can, is it time for us now as Jews? Is it time for us to take back what's rightfully ours? And Jesus says this, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know, but you will receive power. Somebody say receive power. Once again, their mindset is when the Holy Spirit comes, then we're going to overthrow the government. When the Holy Spirit comes, we're taking back our power. When the Holy Spirit comes, we'll get the power we deserve physically on planet Earth. But Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to receive power. And you'll be my witnesses telling people, wait a minute, telling? No, I want to fight. I want the power to fight. No, I want you to tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus says, you will receive power. You're talking about overthrowing a government. I'm talking about you overthrowing sin. You're talking about taking back land. I'm talking about taking back people. I'm talking about you'll get power that on your own, Peter, you couldn't preach. It's a power that, John, you're going to do some miracles, and on your own, you, could, you have such a small mindset to think, it's this that I want to do. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's this that I want to do. You have Jerusalem, I have the world. And the Bible says this. They're chilling out, waiting in that upper room, praying. Jesus ascends into heaven. And the Bible says this. On that day of Pentecost, all the believers are meeting together in one place, and suddenly, somebody say suddenly. suddenly. What that means is they just had no idea. They're just praying, God, you're so good. Bam! Suddenly, there's a sound from heaven like a roaring, mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. They were like, oh, this is what that is. And they began speaking in other languages, and people were like, what in the world? And about 3,000 people gave their heart to Christ that day. There's baptisms happening, and the church began. Not because of what they did, but because of what the Holy Spirit did. Normal day, normal people, normal lives, normal time, different power. What's incredible is today, you may be sitting there going, it's just me. Normal me. Normal life me. Normal person me. And Jesus goes, I love normal. Because I can do incredible things with normal. I want to talk about this for, for a second. Before I talk about what the power of the, the Holy Spirit does in us, can I talk about the importance of the Holy Spirit for a second? Because maybe you're going, I don't know. I, I'm not for sure why I, I need the power of the Holy Spirit. I understand last week the, the, the purpose, but I don't understand really too much about the power. Let me tell you what the, the main purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit in you is doing. The main purpose of the power in the Holy Spirit is to make you more like Jesus. To make you more like Jesus. That's what he does. Because remember, Jesus tells the disciples I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. I've been here physically to teach you, to train you, to educate you, but I'm leaving, and when I leave, I'm giving you my, spirit, my presence because there needs to be someone living in you and through you still teaching you and still educating you because I'm not here physically, but that spirit will be there to guide you spiritually, to coach and to teach. So the, the main importance here of the power is to make you more like Jesus. Well, how's, it, how's he do that? By bringing us reminders of the blessings of God. So the power of the Holy Spirit in us 
is, is bringing us reminders of the blessings of God. Because let's be honest, we're forgetful people. We're forgetful. We have post-it notes because we're forgetful. We have note sections and task lists on our phone because we're forgetful people. Teresa and I would go to the grocery store to get laundry detergent and we'd come back home with eggs, chocolate milk, and candy corn and no laundry detergent. And so Teresa goes, I got this app for us called groceries. And every time there's something that we need, we just open the list and we type it in and then we share the list. So if any one of us goes to the store, we just know what's on the list. So the other day I said to Teresa, when we go to the store, I need to get this. And she goes, put it on the list. <laughs> so we have the app for the grocery list, but I forget to put things on the grocery list. <laughs> and then when I go to the store, I forget to look at the list. <laughs> so I get home, Teresa goes, did you get batteries? I forgot. It's on the list. We're we're just, we're just forgetful. And we go to the store to get one thing and we come back with everything except the main thing. And what happens is in our culture, when it comes to our faith in Jesus, we get everything else except reminding ourselves of the one we actually need. And so what happens is the Holy Spirit reminds you, hey, you need Jesus. You, you, you think you can bless yourself? Just a quick reminder. I, 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 my neighbor reached out to us on Instagram the other day and she said, you know, I, I haven't been to church since COVID. And she said, I was just sitting on the ocean and she said, I just was overwhelmed by wondering and thinking, what am I doing? God is so good. She goes, why did I start thinking that? Holy Spirit reminding you of the blessings of God. So the Holy Spirit, the importance of the power in us is to make us like Jesus by reminding us of the blessings of Jesus. The other important thing about the power of the Holy Spirit is it's the reminder of blessings, but it's the repentance of sin. You know what the Holy Spirit's doing in us is convicting us. You ever heard a pastor preach and you felt so convicted by that pastor? Like you ever been hearing me preach and you're like, I think he's reading my text messages. <laughs> Like, did you see me last night at the club, Pastor Shetman? Did you? We have spies everywhere. Did, did you? Did you? Did you? Did you see me? No, no. It, 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 it's not me that do, I do the preaching. The whole something's gonna blow up. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> do you hear that, bro? I'm like, tongues of fire, bro. You ready? You ready? <laughs> Boom! What if that happened? Thanks. So, you guys are like, what's going on now? We, that's part of the that's part of the sermon. You see that? Smoke, fire, Holy Spirit. Here he comes. Here he comes. So, so re repentance of sin. So, so you think I'm doing the one convicting. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. Now, let me say this. It's a good thing when you have conviction. When you stop having conviction, bad thing. Now, sin, sin is what separates us from God. And Jesus was sinless. So if the role of the Holy Spirit is to make us like Jesus, guess what we need to be? Sinless. But because we're sinful, the Holy Spirit inside of us is allowing us to remember the blessings of God and repent from the life we had to turn away from the old life and go back to its repentance, right? Because sin takes you farther than you want to go and keeps you longer than you want to stay. And so you have to recognize in your life that I'm just so corrupted without Jesus, I need to turn away from the old life. And so many of us are here today and we haven't been to church in 10 weeks because we made a mistake and the mistake spiraled and spiraled and you thought if I go into church, I've been so far away, the walls will fall down. But that's a lie from the pits of hell because this is exactly where we need to be when we screw up. The Holy Spirit's going, get back, get back. The thing the Holy Spirit wants to do in us is when we sin, keep us away from the place we need to come back to when we do. It's a no, no judgment zone. You screw up, we don't know. God knows and he loves you anyway, but you gotta listen to the Holy Spirit and go, I gotta remember the blessings of God and repent and get away from the old life and get back into the life he has for me. It's the reminder of the blessings, repentance of sin, and the renewal of my commitment to God. Notice the path the Holy Spirit's power in us, moving in us, 
reminding us of the blessings of God, repenting, get away from, speaking repentance, turn away from your, and renewing your commitment. I had such a great life with God. I gotta get away from the old life and get back to God, and I'll renew my commitment to go for him. Here's why. Because if you don't make a commitment to God, you'll recommit and renew your commitment to the world. You know what I hate? I hate auto renewal. <laughs> you know what I'm about? We like buy one of those Echo shows. It's like, oh, good news, you get Food Network for a year. But give us your credit card. Because after a year, if you don't cancel it, we'll automatically give you Food Channel. Oh, all we look at is I get it for a year. We don't look at the fact that after a year, you start paying. And here's what's crazy. The Holy Spirit's reminding you, if you don't wake up every single morning and renew your commit to God, you will auto-renew your commitment to the world. The Holy Spirit's reminding us. So I'm going to, with the power of the Holy Spirit, I, I'm going to remember the blessings of God, repent from my old life, renew my commitment. Can I, can I teach you for a second? Do you know what that's called? Big biblical word called sanctification. Just say sanctification. Big church word. Big church word. This is the definition of sanctification. The process of the Holy Spirit Stripping away our sinful habits and bringing us into holiness. Oh, now that is a churchy word. Yeah. Holiness. Oh. Leviticus chapter 19 in the Old Testament, God says this, give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must, somebody say must. must. It's not a choice. You must be holy because I am holy. The Lord your God am holy. So the power of the Holy Spirit in us is making us like Jesus, remembering the blessings of God, allowing us to repent from our sins, renew our commitment because we need to be holy as God is holy. The original language, the Hebrew language, the word for holy is kodesh. Somebody say kodesh. kodesh. The actual definition of the word holy, kodesh, means everything opposite of the world. That's the definition. God said, I, I want to make you holy. What does that mean, God? I want you to be everything opposite of the world. Everything. So the Holy Spirit's power in us is trying to get us to be everything opposite of the world. But our sin nature is pulling us to be everything in the world. It's a constant fight. Which is why it's so important that we rely on the Holy Spirit because he's trying to get us away from the world because our sin nature is trying to pull us back in. So that's the importance of the power. So what does the power of the Holy Spirit do in me? Let's talk about it for a second. The power of the Holy Spirit in you gives you the power to live righteously. Sean, we're going all churchy words today. Righteously. Righteous, actually, the definition means it's the quality or state of being made morally correct or justified. Right. See, you and I, on our own, we're wrong, we're not right. Which is why we need Jesus, who gives us and makes us the righteousness of God. What that means is we need the Holy Spirit giving us the power to live like Jesus and to live a righteous life, a life that's justified, just as if I'd never sinned. Justified. To make us morally right, we can't do it on our own, which is why we need the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.16, Paul says this, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be doing what your sin nature craves. What is Paul saying? If you allow yourself to lead yourself, you will always be wrong. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Which for many of us, we're in here today going, I did follow myself and myself got me in trouble. Myself jacked me up. The Holy Spirit is not leading you down the wrong path to get wasted Friday night. He's leading you away from the wasted Friday night. But if you allow your sin nature to control your lives, you do what you want to do 
but the power of the Holy Spirit gives you the power to live righteously. So you have a choice. Romans 8, those who are dominated by the sin nature, that's a strong word, isn't it? Dominated. Either self will dominate you or spirit will dominate you. And do you know what we live for? We live for self-gratification, not spirit gratification. Those who are dominated by the sin nature think about only sinful things, but those who are controlled by the spirit think about those things that please the spirit. Romans 8, 12, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sin nature urges you. You don't have to live a corrupt life because with the power of the Holy Spirit living in you, he's giving you the power to live righteously. But Sean, I had no choice. Bro, you should have seen her, bro. You have no idea how many times I heard that one. But if you'd have seen her. No, I'm married, but I ain't blind. People, you see things all the time. I see things. I just choose not to take another glance. Yeah. Well, you should have seen her in the gym, bro. You're blind, bro. Oh, no, I saw her. I just know what I got at home. Your appreciation, thank you. So, uh, <laughs> I'm in the gym. Well, I would never dress like her. I'll dress like you, though. I'll dress just like you. The, the, the Holy Spirit's giving you the power to live righteously. Here's why. Because if you don't trust the Holy Spirit, you'll trust self, and self lies to you. Do you know why? Because self is directing your life on emotions, not out of truth. Let me, can I explain it like this? Okay, let me, let me explain it like this. I, I, um, I, you, you, those of you who don't know me, I try to eat healthy. Same. I try to eat, I try, I try, I try, I try to eat healthy. Sunday's my cheat day. Yeah. It's my cheat day. Teresa gets mad at me because even on my cheat day, it's not really a cheat day. You know what I'm She's like, what'd you have today? A protein bar. Oh. <laughs> I, I, it's my cheat day. So what we started doing in, in, in the Blakeney household is this. Because I'm preaching all day, I preach th three services a day, and I, I you know, you're, you're, you're sweating all that kind of stuff. We, we probably won't eat all day long. And so we made Sundays our cheat day, so when we get home after service on Sunday night, it's Taco Bell run. Yeah. Taco Bell. Some of you are like, that ain't cheating, that's death. But anyway, <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole nother sermon, Sean. No, I'm like, we're cheating, we're going for the fences. So, so here's what happens. Every single week, every single week, when I eat Taco Bell, like many of the rest of you, it destroys my life. <laughs> like Sunday night, 30 minutes later, I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Monday morning, you wake up going, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> But here's what happens. Every single Sunday, every single Sunday, I tell myself, don't get Taco Bell. Don't, don't, don't. When they ask you, when Austin asks you for your order, you say, no, no quiero taco, no, 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 no. But every Sunday night, what's your order, Dad? Uh, two chalupas. Because uh, here's what my mind says. Maybe this time, it'll be different. Maybe this time, it won't make me sick. Maybe, maybe this time, maybe that was just the last 10 weeks have been a bad batch of tacos. What happens? Stomach trumps logic. Do you know why it's so important that you and I live by the power of the Holy Spirit? It's because spirit trumps stomach. Spirit trumps he trumps. Why? Because he's saying to us, you and I need to live righteously. I'm trying to make you like Jesus, not more like you. When you give your heart to Jesus, you go, Jesus, come in and make me like you. We don't need more of you. We need more of him. So the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live righteously. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live supernaturally. Supernaturally. Whoa, what does that mean, Sean? I can do magic. No. It's not magic, it's miracle. 
But can I teach, can I teach you for a second? I got, I got five minutes. We're going to go a little long today. All right, so listen. Give me like seven minutes, baby. Seven. When I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, when you give your heart to Jesus Christ, you get the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. One of the things that years ago I recognized is I'd, I'd be sitting in the front row at a church service and the Holy Spirit would put on my heart, pray for this person. Now, maybe not a face, but a symptom, a disease, a pro- the Holy Spirit. And so I started obeying the Holy Spirit. And you've heard me before, I'll get up here and I'll get up and I'll just say, the Holy Spirit put on my heart to pray for this. And, pray, and I got very specific because the Holy Spirit told me, get specific because I want you to know that your faith can be increased by mine and mine can be increased by yours. And I want to pray for a miracle. And what I recognize is in those moments, that's just not Sean having an epiphany. Oh, maybe I'll pray for someone with a lung problem. No, that's the Holy Spirit telling me. Years ago, can I, years ago, years ago, a couple stories here, years ago, I'm sitting in a service. And I used to be very, very nervous to get specific because I didn't want the Holy Spirit to look bad, but come on. If he's giving you something, he'll never look bad. He can't. It's all about really, do you trust me? So the Holy Spirit, oh, here comes Chad, I gotta hurry up. Because Holy Spirit said, it's the walk of doom. You see him, I'm like, here we go. So, so, the Holy Spirit, I'm sitting, the Holy Spirit says, I need you to pray for somebody that has a cancerous tumor on their intestines. Well, that's, that's pretty specific, Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I'm nervous. So I get up and I say, hey, there's someone here with some stomach problems. And I want to pray for those. So after service, a guy comes up with his family. Hey, you prayed for someone with stomach problems. How'd you know that? I said, the Holy Spirit told me. He said, I want to know specifically what the Holy Spirit told you. Um, Holy Spirit told me to pray for someone that had a cancerous tumor on their intestines. He started crying and said, that's me. I'm actually going in tomorrow for my final consult to see what it means. I said, well, in the name of Jesus, let's pray right now. Because I'm believing you're going to go in tomorrow for that consult. And they're going to find nothing. Now, who in the world? Did I just come up with that? No. Was that just, that was just a a, a magical, no. It's because I'm open to the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit speaking through me. I laid hands on his stomach, prayed for him. He calls me back three days later. Well, I um, have my consult. So really, what did they find? He said, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Now, does God work like that in everybody in every circumstance? He can choose to do what he chooses to do. But I believed in faith and listening to the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit that he could. The question is, are we, are we open and available? I, 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 man, I got so much time. I, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. Because I know this is such a this is such a, a, a place of conflict in the church. When I first gave my heart to Jesus Christ, September, oh man, here comes the whole band, dear God. When when I gave my, man, they they're just relentless, bro. It's because they brought the balloons up. I'm taking five minutes back. Um, so it's like, who's the pastor of this church? Oh, I can do what I want. Um, I first gave my heart to Jesus Christ September 20th, 1980. I grew up, my grandparents were Church of God pastors. My dad was a non-denominational Christian church pastor. We didn't talk a lot about the Holy Spirit in church, so I wasn't really for sure about the Holy Spirit. I I thought maybe it it is magical. Maybe, I I don't know what it is. It's the the Holy Ghost. I'm like, is it spooky? I didn't know. So, but September 20th, 1980, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit invades my life. The Holy Spirit's leading me, and he's leading me as long as I allow him to lead me. So, I get in college. And I'm at this church, and this guy comes up, and, and he grew up in like a, like a Pentecostal background, charismatic bracket. He goes, you, you gave your heart to Christ September 20th. I said, he's, what church are you at? I told him what church. And he goes, are you full gospel? Yes. I know I'm not half. <laughs> not a quarter. I, I, well, I, I didn't know what that meant. I, 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 I'd never heard that before. 
full gospel? Are, are you functioning in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Prophecy, speaking in tongues, healing, are, are you functioning in all that? And it made me feel like, because I couldn't at that time, it made me feel like I was missing something. But I wanna say this, the Holy Spirit is not a divider, he's a uniter. And maybe some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit today, we don't have, maybe because we haven't asked for those spiritual gifts to have. Because what I found is this, he will release gifts in you when you expect gifts in you. And what I know is, today, God wants to do a supernatural work in you, so maybe you just go, God, I want all you. The question is not, do you have all of the Holy Spirit? The question is, does the Holy Spirit have all of you? But Holy Spirit, I have your power, and I want to live like Jesus, so whatever you have in store for me, I want it today. And here's the last thing. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to live missionally. Because of our self-gratification, guess who we don't want to live for? Jesus. Guess what we don't want to do? What he says. Guess what we want to do? What we say. Do you know who didn't want to start a church and fought it for two and a half years? Do you know every single day the Holy Spirit told me, there's more for you? Start a church. But can I be honest with you? My pride, my arrogance, my comfort got the best of me because I'd been in larger churches before and thought I'd kind of reached the pinnacle of where I was and I was comfortable with where I was. But the Holy Spirit kept nudging me going, there's more. There's more. You're living for you, and I want you to live for me. A big church is just a big church, but a healthy church is an army. So I want you to have a healthy church. Doesn't matter how big it is. What matters is how bold you are. Living on mission. Because what did Jesus say to Peter? He's out there fishing, and Jesus goes, hey, what you're doing is for you. Come follow me, and I'll make you fish for people. Because what you're living for right now is you, but I need you to live for me. And the Holy Spirit says, I want you to live righteously. I want you to live supernaturally. And I want you to live missionally. It's all about me. Anybody today want to live by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit? Come on, stand your feet. Maybe you're here today and, and maybe you, you haven't seen some of these gifts of the Holy Spirit presenting themselves Number one, maybe it's because we're not accepting of them. Maybe because we're not asking them. Maybe because we're not looking for them. But I had somebody pray over me several years ago and say, Pastor Sean, God told me he's gonna give you a spiritual gift. And you know what it did for me? It gave me expectancy and expectancy and anticipation that I began praying, God, what is that gift? It's like Christmas morning, what's in the bag? What's in the box? I have no idea. I began praying every single day for a year and a half, and God released a spiritual gift on me that I'd never had before, and I was able to interpret scripture differently. I was able to preach differently, and people go, and nobody knew, but I'd get to preach, and they go, man, something's different. What is it? And I wanted to go, it's the Holy Spirit. Many of us are in here today going, I'm exhausted. I'm worn out. I'm beat down. Why? Maybe because we're trying to live like us, unplugged from the power source, and maybe we need to plug back in and go, whatever you have for me, Holy Spirit, I'm all about it. Yes. Come on, let's bow our heads. This is where it starts. It starts with you saying yes to Jesus. It's, the Bible says when we give our hearts to Christ, it's the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of us. You no longer live, but he lives in you. And you can't on your own function in life. You'll always be wrong. You need him to make you right. If you're here today with every head bowed and you've never given your heart to Jesus, the Bible says that he comes in and makes every, every single thing new, but you have to invite him in. So if you're here today and you would say, I want Jesus Christ to come into my heart and radically change my life, give me a place in eternity, wipe the slate clean from my past, I want to, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three, just raise your hand. 
Yeah, raise it up high so I can see it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yes, awesome. Awesome. We're all going to pray this prayer out loud together, but if you raised your hands, you just say it a little bit louder because today's your day. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, today I'm giving you my life. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my past. I want to be a brand new person. I want to live for you. And would your Holy Spirit live powerfully through me? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Come on, Anchor, can we give it up for all of us that prayed that prayer? That made-